Here's what's making news now around Indiana. Big news for Bloomington and Indiana's life sciences sector. New Jersey-based Catalan is inked a deal with a subsidiary of Johnson & Johnson for large-scale manufacturing of J&J's lead vaccine candidate for COVID-19. And that manufacturing will take place at Catalan's biologics facility in Bloomington. 300 jobs to be added there beginning in July to scale up production that could begin in January. Catalan's VP and general manager Dennis Johnson told me this week, Bloomington, the perfect place for the investment. We're lucky to have, you know, whether it's Purdue, Rolls Hallman, IU, great sources of talent. And, and, and I think Bloomington is a real, um, a real center for, for whether it's devices or different forms of biotech with, with several different uh, companies in the area. So we're really pleased to have the talent to draw on, but it's going to be a significant ad. And it's going to range from relatively manual operations to do uh, packaging and to do work on the line fulfilling to QC analysts and scientists. Uh, to, to supervisors and managers. And so uh, when you look at it, it really is across the board. 300 headcount is really adding a small factory to what's already a large factory. Catalan acquired the Bloomington facility from homegrown Cook Pharmaca in 2017. It's grown the employment base in Monroe County to more than 1,200. Just this week, the company christened a $114 million expansion that was announced in 2019. Indiana grocery stores and consumers bracing for more fallout from the pandemic, less meat and higher prices. There are 15 major pork processing plants in the U.S. Two are in Indiana and account for about 8% of all pork production. The Tyson Foods plant in Logansport and Indiana Packers Corporation in Delphi both temporarily shut down. Jason Lusk, the head of Purdue's Agricultural Economics Department, says the closures will have serious repercussions on both the farm and retail side. There, at the moment, there's too many hogs <laughs> out there relative to the amount of processing capacity. So plenty of animals around. It's just that we, you know, we got to convert those animals into food. And that's where the pinch point is at the moment is the ability to do that has been compromised by this COVID virus. Lusk also warns of a slight increase in meat prices and limited selection. Well, Agrinovus Indiana of the state's Ag Bioscience Initiative has named Mitch Frazier as its next president and CEO. Frazier most recently served as chief executive officer of Fishers-based uh, Reynolds Farm Equipment and previously served as VP of Marketing at Tenderbox, VP of Marketing and Investor Relations at uh, Exact Target. He led media relations for Governor Mitch Daniels' team at the Indiana Economic Development Corporation. Frazier succeeds Beth Bechtel, who was appointed Deputy Director General of the Food and Agriculture Organization for the United Nations in Rome. Drive-in movie theaters, a thing of the past or a new trend that's actually making a comeback thanks to social distancing? Around Indiana reporter Mary Rachel Redmond set out to get some answers. It's been over a month since anyone has been able to go into a movie theater to watch the latest releases on the silver screen. Hollywood is projecting losses of nearly $20 billion due to the global shutdown of movie theaters around the world. But the big screen isn't totally dead. In fact, many Hoosiers are stepping back in time to enjoy one of the 20th century's largely forgotten treasures. Come early before the show starts. Give your family a tasty dinner at this drive-in. I do believe that drive-ins may in fact see a new renaissance in the coming months. The drive-in is the ultimate social distancing experience because most drive-ins uh, like us are, first off, we're, we're basically like a big park. We're grass, we're trees, we're outside, um, and we ha typically have a lot of space. We have nine acres. And the last few weekends, the Skyline Drive-In has seen sellout crowds. And Godden tells me he and his team have taken extra measures to ensure maximum safety for all of their customers. We limit the capacity uh, to 150 cars, which seems like a lot, but our normal capacity is 300. So we have about 15 feet between every car. We have a mobile ordering app. They, they sit, they watch the movie while we fix their food. With the fan food app, moviegoers can use their smartphones to order food from the comfort of their own car. Then when it's ready, they get an alert to pick it up at this window. No long lines and social distance maintained. Fan food offers two way communication right through the mobile app with the customer. It's really like almost like a combination of a carry out food business that happens to show movies 
out in the parking lot. And Godin is convinced drive-ins may become part of the new normal moving forward. Drive-ins are going to become a part of the safety precaution because we've been doing this for 70 years and it's always been a social distancing business. <laughs> On with the show. Mary Rachel Redman, Inside Indiana Business.